1921, radio fans were all earphones listening to a pioneer station, WHN. One of radio's trailblazing announcers introduces what he calls a little peach from a Broadway show. The peach poses as radio gets called everything from gag to gadget, at best a plaything and a fan. Famed Uncle Joe Cannon becomes a fan as 19-year-old Marion Talley in 1926 sings in New York for a radio audience of 16 million listeners. Radio is big time, here to stay. Radio and television broadcasting has helped unite people and evolve our culture by disseminating new ideas to the world through entertainment. Let's explore some early mass media moments that challenged the status quo and caused a stir. The wide adoption of radio in the 1920s helped spread access to education and the arts through music and news programs, soap operas, serial mysteries, and spoken plays. One of the most well-known was Orson Welles' 1938 adaptation of The War of the Worlds, where word of an alien invasion unfolded through news bulletins, interrupting what some audiences thought was a regular live music performance. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt our program of dance music to bring you a special bulletin from the Intercontinental Radio News. At 20 minutes before 8 central time, Professor Farrell of the Mount Jennings Observatory, Chicago, Illinois, reports observing several explosions of incandescent gas occurring at regular intervals on the planet Mars. The spectroscope indicates the gas to be hydrogen and moving toward the Earth with enormous velocity. We take you now to Grover's Mill, New Jersey. This is Carl Phillips again, out at the Wilmot Farm. Well, I hardly know where to begin. To paint for you a word picture of a strange scene before my eyes, like something out of a modern Arabian night. Yes, that's it. Half buried in a vast pit. Must have struck with terrific force. See, the object itself doesn't look very much like a meteor. At least not the meteors I've seen. It looks more like a huge cylinder. Has a diameter of um, about 30 yards. The metal on the sheath is, well, I've never seen anything like it. It is estimated that 6 million people heard that live broadcast. This caused mass hysteria, people calling the police trying to figure out what was happening, arguably creating the first viral moment. When television entered the home, it became an even bigger influencer. In the 1970s, broadcasting networks shifted their programming to focus on younger, more diverse audiences and began to explore social issues. These episodes used comedy to discuss hard topics, creating conversation and debate among viewers. All in the Family ran from 1971 to 79, Archie Bunker, a World War II vet, now loading dock supervisor in Queens, New York, is conservative and out of touch. But through his daughter Gloria, her liberal husband Michael, and supporting characters like his cousin Maude and neighbor George Jefferson, both spin-off shows, they teach him, as well as the audience, lessons about racism, homophobia, and women's liberation. In the fifth episode, judging books by covers, Gloria brings her friend over for lunch. Archie continuously makes cringeworthy jokes about his flamboyance and perceived sexuality. Contrast this to later in the episode when he finds out that his vet buddy, longtime bachelor and former football quarterback, is really the one who was gay. What does Mike think, Arch? Oh, Mike, jeez. Well, for one thing, he thinks that friend of his, Roger, is straight. And for another thing, well, Steve, you're going to want to bust him wide open when I tell you this. I don't know where he gets these brainstorms. But he thinks that you're the... I can't even say it, this Steve. He's right, Arch. Huh? He's right. <laughs> oh, you mean he's right about his friend Roger there? About everything. Oh, come on. <laughs> You want to joke about it, all right, but come on, get off it, huh, guy? Arch. How long you known me? 10, 12 years? Yeah. In all that time, did I ever mention a woman? Well, what difference does that make? You're a bachelor. So? <laughs> I know, but bachelors, are, they're always acting kind of private. Exactly. Come on, Steve. <laughs> I mean, I ain't the brightest guy in the world. You want to put me on, put me on, but don't sit there and tell me to do... I mean, look at you, look at... Come on, will you, big clown? You get out of here. Have it your own way, Arch. The truth's in the eye of the beholder anyway. I'll see you later, pal. 
Steve was the first depiction of a gay man on television. The show was immensely popular, reaching up to 21 million households at its height. And this was such a controversy at the time that even President Nixon can be heard discussing it in the background of the Watergate tapes. This led the way for the first openly gay recurring character on TV, six years later, with Billy Crystal in Soap. Maude premiered in 1972 and ran for six seasons. The Arthur starred as a middle-aged, armchair activist liberal, living with her fourth husband in suburban Tuckahoe, New York. All quite racy at the time. The show tackled a lot of new issues for television, such as this two-part episode dealing with abortion called Maude's Dilemma. And can I trust you to keep a secret? <laughs> Don't look at me, Viv. <laughs> Vivian, I'm pregnant. <laughs> You're a kid. <laughs> Aren't you? You're pulling my leg, Maud. Maud? Maud, please pull my leg. Vivian, at age 62, I'll be the mother of an Eagle Scout. You know, I've been thinking. There is no earthly reason for you to go through with this at your age. You know it, I know it, Walter knows it. I don't it. want you to talk of just... No, don't talk about it. I didn't now, say please. anything, but now that you mentioned it... It's legal in New York now, isn't it? Oh, of course it is, Walter. Mother, I don't understand your hesitancy. When they made it a law, you were for it. Of course! I wasn't pregnant then! <laughs> Mother, it's ridiculous. My saying this to you, we're free. We finally have the right to decide what we can do with our own bodies. All right, then will you please get yours into the kitchen? <laughs> the episodes premiered one month before the Supreme Court began to argue Roe vs. Wade. After the decision was finalized in 1973, they re-aired the episodes to a viewership of 65 million people, even after several stations refused to air it. As mass media has evolved, we adapt and continue to use entertainment to educate, because when you're invested in the characters and the message is right, especially if it's delivered to you through comedy, it resonates with you just a little bit more.